if you don't mind uh, going into the lead snap group and seeing if it's uh, if it's streaming in there for me, just so I know. I want to make sure that I get a recording of this. And here, who wants to share some wins while I get this tech stuff figured out? Anybody got some wins from the last week since we last met? Step right up. Great, uh, a great uh, fly-in fishing five-day adventure with the boys. 75, 80 fish a day. It was, it was unbelievable. That was my win for the week. It took my 60th birthday and spent some time with some guys and had a great time. Caught lots of fish. 70, I think it, 80 fish a day. What was the average like pounds on the fish? Uh, you're probably talking, uh, you know, two, three pounds. And then you got some big ones okay. in there, some pike. So walleye and pike. And um, when you get into those flying fishings and you hire a guide, it's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. You know, when they know where to go, how to catch them. It was just, it was a great, uh, a great way to spend my 60th. So there you go. Congratulations and happy birthday. What's your strategy? Are you on the uh, throwback or the, um, you, know, just, you just muted yourself. Do you throw them back or eat them for dinner? Oh no, we, uh, we throw them back. We just keep a few for uh, shore lunches. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Great. That's a great win, man. Johnny and I were just talking about living the, the digital lifestyle and being able to take time off and doing things like that. Or it's amazing. So I'm, I'm glad that you were able to do that. Who else has a win from last week? Chuck's coming in. Anybody? Yeah, I have a cool one. I got win. my hope. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I got my, my first client uh, in the new kind of hybrid SEO uh, approach. So uh, excited on what I'm taking here and starting to pick up some people. So that was, that was cool. Nice. So pick up some people. What does that mean? Like 10 new clients? Uh, not, not in the last week right now. This was uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, let's see by September 1st. Yeah, that's, I, that should be able to, I should that's be able awesome. to knock that out. How yeah. are you, how are you filling your funnel? What's working? This was uh, this was one that I'd actually been talking rank and rent uh, for uh, over a year, and it's it's actually a friend of mine. He has a business in Nebraska, and it had he had been focusing on another business, and this one had started to decline. And so I'm like, hey, let me let me put in the tools that I've got and uh, and see if we can get this to it was nice to show them the heat map and give them, you know, show them what we're doing. And so that's, I, I'm using this as a, as a, as a case study. And so uh, thankfully a paid case study, but um, still to be able to take this and, and duplicate. That's awesome. Great. How are you going to get the other nine clients for before September? Uh, well, I'm going to hopefully in the next uh, 55 minutes, someone's going to lay out a roadmap for me. Nice. So 15 minutes. All right. I love it. All right. It's good to hear. All right. One more. Who's got another win? I had a, I had a quick win. Um, I, uh, I started a, um, uh, a concrete lead gen site. It's probably like a year ago. I'm not a concrete guy at all. It's not the, the niche that I want to go into, but I needed some concrete stuff done at my house. Uh, I need like a driveway done. And I was like, I was, you know, getting quotes and I see that they're pretty expensive. And I was like, man, what if I create a lead gen in my, you know, hometown and, you know, maybe one day it works. So it's kind of been on the, the back burner for a year, uh, but it finally, uh, you know, I put some time into it and it, it finally started getting some leads. I found a guy and uh, we were able to barter for a few months um, of like him getting leads and he's going to come and, and do a, a driveway for me. So it was pretty cool. That you kind of like look around and you're like, what do I need? And you can just kind of make it happen with the lead gen model. So it was, it was a cool win for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Get into some new, some new niches and new markets. This is in one specific geolocation. Uh, it's in two cities. So I'm in um, Sacramento. Um, that's like a really big city. And then there's like smaller little uh, pockets around there. So I put up two, two cities. Um, and they're both like slowly trickling in leads here and there, but um, 
so yeah, that was that was pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. All right. Well, today we brought this man, Johnny Ochoa, on the call. He has, in my opinion, been successful in Legion. And anyone who's successful in Legion, I want to hear what they have to say because there's so many different paths to success in this model. Everybody seems to take a little bit different approach based on your skill set, your resources, all the things that, you know, the challenges that come up in your path along the way. And to see somebody continue to grow is just very intriguing to me and to find out more about what they're doing and to be able to bring that back to the community and say, hey, this is how I did it. And you can take it, you know, take what's useful and leave the rest behind. But I think seeing these like real time case studies along the way is so valuable. It's been so valuable, valuable for me along the way. And Johnny is like, he's been to our events. We've broken bread. We've laughed. We've joked. We've, uh, you know, networked. We've done all kinds of different things together. And I just really have a lot of respect for Johnny and what he's been able to create for himself and his family and I want to bring him on here and just share a little bit of that magic with the rest of us and see what kind of takeaways we can get, how we can be motivated and inspired by maybe his journey and uh, in our own business and, and move ourselves forward. So Johnny Ochoa, welcome to the call. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, well, thank you guys for coming. I'm definitely humbled to be uh, asked to, to speak to you guys. Um, I, don't, I don't consider myself like I don't do anything special. Uh, I, I feel like I'm a normal person that just kind of, you know, stumbled upon lead gen uh, about three years ago. And uh, I, I'll be the first one to tell you that, you know, as far as uh, being an SEO expert or like a Google expert, that's, I wouldn't consider myself that at all. Um, I'm just someone that like put my head down and I was just grinding and I did what, uh, you know, my mentors told me to do, which is, you know, put up properties and, you know, make phone calls and, um, you know, with enough repetitions, um, you know, you throw something against the wall and it, it'll it stick. And I'm a firm believer in that. Um, so a little bit about me. I have a, a yeah, wife. Tell us a little and, bit about how you got started. So we'll, we'll go through a, a little bit here and then we'll open it up for some questions. If you have specific questions for Johnny, but like what, what inspired you to get into digital marketing? You know, what was that initial vision that you saw for yourself? Did you say, I'm going to be making, you know, seven figures a month, like right out of it. Like, how did that go down? What motivated you, inspired you to get going here? Yeah, so uh, I, I started three years ago. Um, it was just right before COVID happened. Um, I've always been in the uh, hospitality industry. So the restaurants, bars, nightclubs, that was my, that was my go-to. I, I love that kind of theme. I love being able to create experiences for people. Um, but I, I knew that I, I, I didn't like showing up every day, which... I'm sure that's like most people, you know, like the nine to five was not my thing. I, even though it was like six to 2 a.m. was my schedule, but still it was five days a week and it was, it was rough. Um, and I was like, man, I, there's got to be something out there, right? Like there has to be something that um, I can do at my house or, you know, as uh, one of my biggest things was I would, I was a general manager and it, it didn't matter if I put in a hundred hours or if I put in 50 hours, like I got the same paycheck every single, you know, two weeks. And I just hated that. And I was like, I want to get paid for the work that I'm putting in. I had no problem putting in a hundred hours a week or 60 hours, whatever it was, but I want to be compensated for it, you know? And in that industry, that's not, that's not what happens. Um, so I stumbled upon, um, you know, digital marketing. I stumbled upon the lead gen model and I was like, wait, so if I want to work a hundred hours and put up 50 properties in one month, then, you know, put the time in and rank it, then I'm going to get all the money back for it. And uh, it, it seemed like a no brainer. Um, it seemed like, you know, when I think of digital marketing and I think of business owners, um, you know, they can have the best, uh, let's say for a painter, he can be the best painter in the world. He's got the coolest equipment, he can paint a house in one, you know, one hour. He's got a wrap truck, everything looks cool. But if he doesn't have customers coming in, it's useless. You know, all that is, it, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and so when I thought about that, I'm like, you know, customers coming in, that's the, that's the oxygen that all these business owners need. Um, so if I can provide that oxygen, like why it, it seems like a no brainer, you know, they need that to survive. So 
everything kind of aligned. Um, and I, I, I dove right in. Um, and I'll be the first to say I was not successful my first six months, first eight months. I was um, it sounds you know, like you like you were you got as excited about the model as I did. So if you came out swinging, like what what did that look like? Because I came out swinging, I put up way too much and you know got upside down and everything. But how did that work for you? Did you just plaster the internet with all kinds of stuff, or, or how did that go down? Yeah, I think uh, I went into all the worst uh, niches that you could go into because you know with me, I looked around and I was like, what do people need? Of course, they need to pressure wash their windows or they need a junk removal, you know, to remove a, a refrigerator. And it was just not very good. You know, I'm competing against a million guys and the margins or the uh, ticket prices are 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And so it was really hard at the beginning because it wasn't going like I expected to. And I didn't want to get into a huge niche like roofing or um, something like that, that I didn't have the confidence to. I really think that I could to, could rank for. So I started out small and it was not the best time. That's for sure. Yeah. So the, we talked a little bit about like overcoming challenges. I think that's what a lot of us face when we come in. I mean, for me, it was like wrong niches, wrong location, too many websites, too many GMDs, too much to manage, not enough research. Like there were unbelievable challenges that I had to overcome. And I think a lot of people kind of get in and feel that and then they they can't push through it, right? So like, what was that moment or what was that thing? Was it just, you wanted it so bad that you just kept banging on it or going to work every night and uh, in the job that you described was just too painful for you? Like what, what helped you get through those challenges? Yeah, I think it's just having that never quit mentality. Um, it's not like an if it's going to happen. It's more of a when is it's going to happen. Um, like I know when I started, there were guys, at least they were saying, you know, they were going from zero to 20K, uh, you know, monthly recurring revenue like in two months, three months span. And um, I was like, well, why are I doing that? And there's a lot of people around me that were coming in and dropping out. And um, it was it was you just have to put your head down. And I think you have to realize that this is a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Like there, there may be some guys that, you know, do that 20 K in, in four months or five months, but for the most part, like it's going to be a steady, um, you know, you're, you're going to steadily increase your monthly recurring revenue. Um, it's not going to be that instant gratification that, you know, other people have. So you have to be able to kind of push through that mindset and uh, be able to put your head down and just say, you know, I'm not going to quit at this. Um, you know, there, there are business owners out there that are going to tell you no. Um, and you have to, you have to be able to take that. Like not everyone is going to uh, drink the Kool-Aid, I guess you can say that they need leads. Business owners are, um, you know, they're, they're entrepreneurs. Yes, but there's definitely levels to the entrepreneur. Um, you know, there's people that, they just don't want to have a boss, but they're cool, you know, just kind of paying their bills and just getting by and and not really um, expanding. And that, those aren't the guys that I wanted to work with at the beginning or wanted to work with now. Um, you know, you want to find the guys that, um, you know, they want to grow like they want to have one or two or three different crews. Um, so it's 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 finding the right business owner. I think that was another tough one um, is not everyone's going to say yes to you and you have to be able to, to take the nose and you have to be able to, again, put your head down and just say, you know, this is not, they're not saying no to me personally. They're just saying no because they don't align with what I want. Um, eventually someone's going to say yes. Like it's just a, it's a numbers game. Yeah. I think they say like 3% of the market is ready to buy what you have to sell, no matter what you're selling or what market you're trying to target. So if you keep that in perspective, it's like, how do you find that 3%? I know for me, when I first got in the model, got upside down and started doing more sales, I was banging the phone. You know, it was like, that's how I learned sales. And it was a lot of no's, but those yeses ended up being some pretty big yeses. And that's what made all the difference was just playing that numbers game and continuing to, to not get discouraged and to just keep picking up the phone and, and asking more people, the more offers you make, the more deals you close. Did you have sales experience when you got into digital marketing or did you build that skill as you went along? I did not. And I, I still don't consider myself a very good salesman. Um, like I did sales when I was younger. I, I, you know, try to sell those, those knives and I was absolutely yeah, horrible instant. at it. Yeah. Like the cut code knives or whatever they were called, but I was, I was horrible at the, and so 
I always told myself like, Hey, I'm just not a salesperson. Like I, I, I can't sell something that someone doesn't need. Um, and like, if he doesn't need that knife, it's just more of, you know, uh, a, a, he doesn't need it. He, it's more of something that, um, trying to find the word for it. It's a, it's not a necessity. Right. Um, and so I think once I changed my mindset in this, cause I still don't consider this sales. Like when I'm talking to business owners, right. I don't consider myself, you know, selling leads to them. Um, I consider them, you know, we're trying to grow your business. Um, and like I kind of mentioned before, uh, you know, customers are the lifeline to any business. So I'm not trying to get you more, you know, I'm not trying to sell you these leads. I'm just trying to grow your business. And if you have that mindset too, that again, that one customer can turn into a hundred customers that turn into, you know, one crew that he's got to two crews. Um, that's the mindset that I want the business owner to have, which is the same mindset that I have. If he's just thinking that he's paying, you know, per lead, or if he's paying, um, a lead at a time, it, it's, that's just not the guy that I want to grow with. Um, and that, so I think once I changed my mindset with that, that it's not sales, it's the business growth. Um, that's when things started to, to roll a little bit. Right on. Yeah. I think there's a lot of positioning in, in what you're saying. And I kind of like intuitively do it and have to calibrate to every single phone call or client or prospect that I'm, that I have on the line is that, you know, I'm, I'm making you, I'm giving you an invitation to join me. And the more that you position yourself as the expert, the less desperate you are to get that client, the more that you can prove up your value and the leads that you've created for other businesses, the more it's, it's just like, Hey, this is what I do. This is what I've done for other people. I could potentially do that for you. Are you on board or not? You know, and you don't have to oversell it or try to beat them into a, a, a deal. You're just, you're just making the invitation. And those are the kinds of people that you want, right? Or at least in my experience that I want, because they're raising their hand and they're saying, I want to work with you because I trust you. You've built the trust, you've built the rapport. And I see what you've done for other people. I want the same thing to happen for my business. And, and that's what uh, kind of makes the difference. So, some people I have to get on a, a per lead deal just because of the volume and different things like that. There's always variables, but the general kind of perspective that I have is, is what I just said. Yeah. And again, you, can, you can't expect everyone to say yes to you. Like yeah, if that's your mindset coming in, like you're going to be so sad. You're going to be burnt out really quickly. You're going to be like, why does no one like me? Um, you have to accept that there are some people that are not like their mindset as an entrepreneur. They're just not ready to grow. And uh, you can't fit a square you know, peg into a circle. Right. So if there's a guy that you think is right and, you know, you gave him leave for two weeks and he's just still not saying no, you got to know when to cut the cord and just kind of like move on. Um, and again, I think that's what I didn't do at the beginning. I just wanted anyone that would say yes. And I wasn't really reading the room. Um, and it just, it that's didn't. Normal, though, I think. Me- yeah, it's normal in the beginning, right? We want, we want yeses. And so we have to kind of like feel our way into that. And, you know, a lot of these people have been beat down too. They've, they've been screwed over by their companies or the lead source wasn't even any kind of intentional um, thing on, you know, other people working with them, but the leads just didn't materialize and they got left hanging or whatever it was probably, you know, a hundred times over and they get calls nonstop. We have to be a little bit, you know, uh, in tune with where they're at too and feel through them and say, Hey, you know, I'm different. Like I always try to differentiate myself. I'm not home advisor. I'm not any of these other people that you work with. Like I'm a bespoke service that is not, you know, I, I, I'm like standing next to the CEO a lot of time, of the time, like you're, you're talking to the guy who has answers and not, you're not going to get shuffled off as somebody who's not going to be able to, to work with you, you know? Yeah. And for me, like my business, I, again, I started when I was three years ago, so don't judge, but my, my business name was Johnny O Leads. I love and it. And so, because Johnny Ochoa, right. So I thought it was really clever at the time. Um, but so now, like when I'm telling people, I'm like, hey, like, you know, this is Johnny O'Leeds. Like you're talking to Johnny. Like you're not talking to some other guy. Like this is right. this is me. And you kind of create those relationships, um, which goes a long way, you know? Yeah, for sure. How do you how do you fill your pipeline today in today's world? Like, how do you get new clients? Where do you where do you search for them? Yeah, uh, I've been um, I guess you can say blessed with I've uh I've had clients that I've had for, you know, three years, two years now, and they keep referring me more work, which is great. Um, that's, 
that's probably how I get most of my work now is just giving, um, because a lot of these service guys, like they have, you know, cousins that do the same thing out in Texas or Florida or wherever they have connections or cousins that do the exact same thing. Um, and so I, every time, like when I'm providing a service, when I find my guy and I'm providing a service and I do really well for him. Um, and I, cr- like, I always aim to crush it. I want to make it my mindset with these guys is I want to make my deal so crazy good that he would have to be an idiot to leave me. Um, and knock on wood in three years, I haven't had a client leave. Like I've had a guy leave the industry, but I haven't had a client leave me yet. Um, and I think that's because I just give such a great deal and I just want to make it like, you got to be an idiot to leave me, you know? Um, And so I feel like, you know, they tell their cousin or they tell someone else, even a friend that, you know, does some kind of niche sometimes. And I'm like, Oh, I guess I can go into that. Um, And it just, it just works. So I just, I try to give so much value um, that it's, it's a no brainer for them. The Hormozy offer, Alex Hormozy offer. Yeah make it so this the deal so stupid they can't they can't even say no exactly and i know that like my prices are probably lower than like a lot of people and i know sometimes they're like why is it so low uh but for me man i just i like value you know and i like to make it like i said make it just so evident that you're not going anywhere you know yeah uh, we have a question here real quick on the same subject do you do you cold call uh, email, like what's your, what's your strategy to just get them to get in front of them? Yeah. So usually it's a, you know, usually I get connected with the, um, like with the cousin or the brother or the uncle or whoever it is. Um, and I'll just call them. I love, I don't love, I hate speaking like this is like, eh, uh, I'm not really a good guy on the phone. Like I, I just, I have to be in the right mindset. Like, if you call me up right now, I'm probably not going to answer because I just I have to be in the right mindset to, like, get my talking juices flowing or whatever it is. But once I do get in that zone, I love like I love talking um, and I love being able to feel someone's energy. Um, I I just don't think a text message or uh, an email can really do that. So I try to get on a call. I try to get on a Zoom and I want to like I want to see them. You know, I want to feel their energy. I want to feel like how they treat their business. and um, and I just want to be able to be a people person to them. Cause again, I, I, I'm not selling them anything. Like I'm not, I'm not doing that. I am, you know, a, a person that's going to be a partner to them. That's going to help grow their business. And I think that's, that's huge because I like to create the relationship first and then the leads come after that. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a great point too. Like I have so many different roles that I play and some people are just sales or they're just ops or whatever it is, but I play a lot of different roles. And I think most people that come into this model, you have to learn how to play a lot of roles. And there's a certain energy that I have to have, you know, being present in that energy before I actually take a step. I'm the same way you are, man. I'll, I'll, I won't answer calls. And there's a certain frame mindset and frame that I have to be in. And once I get in that frame, they're like, okay, I'm calling all these people back. I'm doing all this stuff. And I just get that energy and build on it. You don't have to answer every call, right? It's like the people... They're calling. It's like you're busy, right? It's like, I'm a busy guy. That's what I. This is what I do, right? But I don't. I'm not going to answer every call. I may get back to you within a reasonable amount of time, but I'm going to do that when it's convenient for me, not just um, you know on a from a time standpoint, but from a mental health standpoint. You know, it's like if you're driving in the car and you're stressed out, like don't answer the phone. You know, you're just going to get more stressed, right? And it's not going to come across. Uh, well, too and good. people can feel that, you know, as much as you try to fake it and Ooh. try to be like, Hey, how are you? Like, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, you can't fake energy and people can feel that they can feel it through the phone. They can feel it through, you know, maybe not so much a text message, but a phone or a zoom call. Like you can try to put the face on, but there's definitely, you know, those subtle things that you do that people can see right through, you know? Totally. Yeah. And, and they, they, they talk to people on the phone all day long too. So they can, they can feel that. What about like all the changes, man? It's like, you've been in it for three years. Like the, the models change, the markets change, like customers change, like everybody's different than, it, than they were. And it's changing in real time. Google's changing different things. Like how do you stay ahead of all of this stuff? Like what's your strategy to do that? Or, or you know, what's working for you to do that? Yeah. So first off, man, it definitely sucks. Um, and it definitely, like, I think about it, I'm like, man, my whole, my whole life is, or my whole, uh, yeah, my whole life is basically I'm relying on Google, you know, and 
the moment Google changes their algorithm or, you know, whatever's working now might not work in a few weeks. We're just like, you know, we're at the mercy to Google and it like sucks. Like that's, that's, that's probably the one part about this business. That's like, ah, but you know, you just have to get through it. You have to be like, this is what's going to happen. And you have to put that mindset in that, Hey, in a month from now, like my SEO might not work. Or in a month from now, the GMB strategy that I have, it's not going to work. And you have to be able to take those blows and just carry on. Um, and it's obviously easier said than done because when you have clients, you know, calling you up, like, Hey, how come I'm not getting calls anymore? Because you're like, that's what happened. Obviously I'm sure everyone knows recently, like all the reviews got taken off, which means rankings, you know, went down. And then it's like, and it's going to take me a few uh, weeks to get the rankings back up. And in that meantime, you know, now I'm just like, I'm battling, you know, my guys like, Hey, what are the calls coming in? So uh, I, I'm a firm believer in mindset. Uh, like I am someone that, uh, I have my habits that I create and I fall back on my habits. Like my habits are my crutch. And, uh, because in this business, like you're going to have your highs and you're going to have your lows. Like your motivation is going to be high when you close that, you know, $5,000 job or $2,000, you know, client, and then you're going to go a month and you're not going to close anything. So, uh, it's like, how do you get through that month of, you know, no wins? And it's really the mindset and it's really having those habits. So I'm like a, I'm a big believer in you tell me your, you know, if, if you tell me your first two hours of your day, I can probably tell you like how your business is going or how successful you are, because I feel like those first two hours of your day are just like key. Um, you know, like you know, what time do you wake up? Yeah, exactly. What time do you wake up? You know, what are your, what do you like to do in the morning? What's your, uh, you know, what's your routine? What are your habits? And if people that don't have these, you know, habits, I feel like they're just being real reactive to the day. Um, and they're reactive to whatever happens. If a problem comes in, you pick up your phone right away, you know, you, 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 uh, press the, the timer, you know, the it's, it's going off in the morning, you press it, you look at your phone, you see all these emails, you're like doing your emails in your bed. Your day just kind of like gets out of hand. You know, you don't have control over the day. The day has control over you. So if you can get up and not touch your phone for the first hour, I think that's like a huge win. I mean, try that. Try that for the for the next few days. Just wake up. Don't touch your phone for the next hour and, you know, either go for a run or have your breakfast or read the newspaper or meditate or go in an ice bath or have a, you know, any of these um, positive things that you can do for yourself and just see how your day will change. Um, I, that's, I think that was been, that's been a huge thing for me, um, is starting my day correctly. And, um, I say newspaper, but you could do like on your phone, the world, you know, the, uh, wall street journal on your phone or all these apps or whatever it is. Uh, I guess not your phone because you can't touch your phone for the hour. Um, but you get what I'm going with it. Uh, <laughs> um, start what, what, your day, right. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big believer, believer in that too. And it was, uh, Shit, it's probably been eight or 10 years ago when I started doing yoga every morning. And it was a huge mindset shift for me to take a couple of hours out of my day at the beginning of my day for me and be like, nobody's bugging me until I get done with this yoga class. But I'm telling you, taking that, that two hours, which is less than 10% of the day, I was 30% more productive for the rest of the day because I was healthy. I felt better. My mindset was changing and all that. Did without going into more detail on kind of like your background in the the restaurant and bar industry, did you consider yourself an entrepreneur at that time, or did you have an entrepreneurial role? I mean, I don't know what your you said you were a manager, but do you feel like lead generation was a shift into entrepreneurship from where you were at, or did you already consider yourself an entrepreneur? Man, I think I've always had that mindset to be an entrepreneur. I've always had that. Like, man, I just, I don't like people telling me what to do. Like, I, I think I can run this place better. Or I know what's kind of going on. Um, like I, again, I, I'm cool with working the long hours as long as it's coming back to me. Like I always knew that. And I always knew that I, if I had the opportunity or found something that, um, that I believed in or that I love that gave me the opportunity to, to be an entrepreneur, I knew I would excel in it. So it's, I think it was always something that I knew and I was just waiting for the opportunity. I was like, what's out there? Like, give me, me. you know. Yeah. Something I always knew I always wanted and I never came across the right people, the right model at the right time and have the right, you know, situation that I could dive into it and actually 
pursue entrepreneurship. But once I had the model and everything put in front of me, it was like, yeah, this is this is for me. So all of my yeah, I'm the. Go ahead. I, I mean, I'm like the, I'm like lead gen. I'm like digital marketing. I'm their like number one advocate, man. I love what I do. I think at the last lead snap, like I, I, I definitely shed a few tears because I'm just so grateful for this um, industry that, that we're in. And I just, I try to tell everyone about it. I try to bring in my cousin and my, you know, uh, uncle, and I try to bring people in and just people are like, yeah, I don't know about it. And I just, I get frustrated because I'm like, man, this, this like model that we have, it's like a, it's a, it's kind of like a, a win-win. Like it's, it's, it's so not easy, but again, if you put the time in and you make that extra call each day, or even again, you set out those two hours a day and make a call. It's just a numbers game. Like this is all a number. Someone is going to say yes. It's, it's a fact. If, if someone always says no for the next month, every time you're on the phone, it's impossible. You might as well go buy a lottery ticket because you're lucky or unluckiest lucky person. Um, it's, it's just a no brainer model. And I just love it so much. And uh, if you're here or if you're on the replay, like you're already in the right place, you know, you've already taken that step to, to kind of go all in or even be interested in this model. Um, now you just got to put the time in and um, yeah. And I just, I love it so much. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, it's it's awesome to um, be in a room with people that are as motivated and inspired by the business model as, as I am. That's why I love being around you for that reason. And, and the model itself is like, I see it as a catalyst for personal growth overall, because it, it brings you up against all of the, the self-imposed limitations and just your comfort zones and everything. Like, that's the that's the path, right? And I think that's what people why some people don't tune into it because they're like oh that's going to be hard oh i'm going to have to get over that thing that i you know that program i'm running or that belief i have about myself or the world around me or uh, my negative mindset like it immediately kind of brings that stuff to the surface and you're like surface and you're either going to going to go in lean into it or you're going to be like oh and like you know back away and not pursue it and i think for most people i don't know what percentage of the population is are actually entrepreneurs, but uh, I think Alex Alex Charfin has a book called The Entrepreneur Personality Type. I think he says two percent. Seems a little low to me, but could be. I'm in a bubble, right? Because I only roll with entrepreneurs, but that's a pretty <laughs> small number. So if you think 98 out of 100 people that I that I mention this stuff to, they're going to think I'm bananas and put and try to put me away in, a, in some asylum or something. You know, it's like, what are you thinking? Yeah. Like, how can you possibly have these big ideas? How can you possibly think you can do that? Right. But here we are. Yeah. It's I entrepreneurs are, it's a you versus you mentality. That's what it comes down to. And some people, they just don't want to, you know, get into that with themselves. Like you said, they want the not easy route. Cause I'm not saying a nine to five is easy by any means, but a lot of those times, those jobs that they're telling you what to do, you know, and the entrepreneur it's you wake up and you're the one that's responsible for the day. You know, it's, you have to set out your schedule and you got to be the one that stays motivated and, you know, keeps putting in time to the business. And some people just, they don't have that, you know? Yeah. Well, if you, you know, because you're required to like wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and be like, that's there's the answer to all of your problems <laughs> right there right that's hard yeah it's hard yeah to, it is it really is yeah when you have that level of awareness about yourself and the way that you operate like i said it, br it brings it all up to the surface for me but i'm all about it i'm i'm here to evolve and grow and entrepreneurship and this this model in particular has been an amazing catalyst and vehicle to do that in your 3 years johnny what's like something you're super proud of like something you've accomplished for a client or you know, the lifestyle you've been able to provide for your family, wh whatever it is, like what, what's like a super proud moment for you? Man, I think the most proud that, um, that I've been is just being able to, so I have a one-year-old son and I just enjoy spending time with him. And, uh, in this model, I get to work whenever I want. I get to, um, you know, put the time in whenever I want. And if my son wants to hang out for the day, I get to hang out with them all day. I don't have someone telling me, hey, you got to do this. Hey, you got to do that. And I just think having uh, the freedom um, to choose what you want to do with your time is the biggest accomplishment and biggest win ever. Uh, it's because I have friends that, you know, they have babies during the same time that we do. And, you know, they're going, you know, they leave 6 a.m. and come back at, 
5 p.m. and they get two hours with their son a day, you know, because he goes to sleep at seven. And I'm like, man, I'm just so blessed and thankful that I get to wake up with them, you know, whether it's 4 a.m. or whether it's 6 a.m., I get to wake up with them and then I get to put them to sleep. Um, and it's just, it's such a win. And it's definitely my why of, of why I continue to grow because I'm, I'm like, man, I want to just keep, I just want to keep doing it, you know, and I just want to keep providing him the life and just being there for him. Um, that's what I enjoy the most. That's awesome. Yeah, man, that, that kind of freedom and ability to take the time for family is, is really crucial. And, and it's great to see somebody, you know, in the entrepreneurial space who's succeeding, who knows how to, I don't even think it's balance. It's like, it's more of a, a blend, right? Like you're merging your, your career online life with your personal life. And, you know, for me, it kind of ebbs and flows. And it's like, this morning, I took my son to the airport. And then I took a call and it's like, it's just always one, you know, I'm doing personal stuff and, and business stuff and, and just allow that stuff to flow in. You talked about the morning routine that that's made a big difference for you. Is that like the advice you would give to somebody who's sort of, sort of earlier in the lead gen journey to create that as like, that's the biggest piece of advice or what is a bigger piece of advice you would give? Yeah, I think my, my biggest, especially for someone that's just starting out is, um, it's definitely the mindset. And I, like I mentioned before, it's just accepting no's. Like I know for me, when I started and someone said no, it was like my world was crumbling around me. You know, I've never, because again, I've never been in this sales space or where I'm having to talk to people. And the moment they said no, I was crushed. I just didn't, uh, it was, wasn't like my whole world was done. I didn't understand that, hey, this is part of the business. And uh, you just have to, you know, pick the phone up and you have to dial again. And it's having that mindset that, again, they're not saying no to you personally. They're not saying that you're a terrible person because they don't want to work with you. They're just not on the same level as you. Um, and I, I know it, it, that first lead snap when it was Danny and he was like, you know, you are the prize that really resonated with me because at Sorry, the end of the day, like you are the Miami, the Miami event in February, right? Danny Burrell. Yes, yes. Yes. When he said that, hey, guys, you are the prize like there. People should be fighting for you. It really resonated with me because, you know, some people, they might not see the value in you. But uh, you, at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to help this guy, you know, go go from one truck to two trucks. So you're you're the commodity. You know, they're not the commodity. You're not you're just happen to be, you know, presenting yourself to them. But you're the one that should they should be fighting for. And I think, again, once you change that mentality in your mind. Uh, the no's aren't as harsh uh, and they don't affect you as much because you're like, oh, that guy, he's not on my level. You know, he's not he's not where, you know, he, he's not the guy for me, basically. Right. And it is a mindset shift. It's that kind of positioning that I was talking about before. And, and I know this from my own personal sales calls. It's like um, just just knowing that the people who are serious about growing their business will take your call if you present yourself in the right way and that's the other pitch if you're if you look like everybody else they might not take your call but if you distinguish yourself and you convey an air of value and that you are the prize from the get go a real business owner will take your call and listen to what you have to say yeah that's what i've learned very true yeah of course yeah so um when you do have a bad day, do you ever have a bad day? I guess I should ask that first. Do you ever have a day where you're like, man, this, this sucks. Like what, what just happened? I got, you know, whatever happened, Google did, uh, you know, shake and shake and bake or what I like, how do you stay motivated in those moments? Yeah, it definitely does. And uh, I think it goes back to uh, those habits that you create or even having a life outside of uh, your business, uh, you know, being able to, like, I kind of like ashamed to say it, but it's starting to be become cool now. Like I'm kind of a pickleball person. Like I just, I'm, I'm a competitor. Right. And I feel like a lot of people in this industry, we're competitors, you know, we're competing against the guy that's number two or number three. So I love to compete. Um, and so if I'm having a bad day, I go out and I, you know, I play some pickleball, I compete against, you know, the 80 year old, women and I feel great because I'm beating them, you know, or whatever it is. But I, I love um, just kind of stepping away. Like you got to step away from the business. Uh, me and my wife just came back from Florida and we had, we had like a reset um, where we, you know, we took a few days and 
got away from our business and recharged. And I think those that's that's what's needed. Yeah, like you can't you can't put your full self into the business 24/7. Like you have to be able to and it's a lot harder because you're working from home. So the computer is like always right there or your phone's always right there. Um, and it's just like a constant rem reminder of what's going on. But if you can step away and uh, have those, you know, whatever your, you know, vices, whatever you're out is, maybe you go for a run or a walk and just like step away from the business. It's, it's, a, it's a huge, again, goes back to mental mindset shift. Um, that resets. And then you're kind of like, all right, I'm ready to go again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my vice is you meant that in, from a positive frame, right? Positive vice. Positive. All positive. Yeah. 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 We all, we've all had those other ones. Well, I don't know. I have. Uh, as far as like future, like where are you going? Uh, what are you doing with your business? Like there's the chats blowing up here with what are your niches? What are your MRR? I'll, I'll open up for questions in just a minute, but kind of like, you don't have to share your numbers if you're not comfortable doing that, but like, what, what's the future vision? Where do you take this from here? You've already created an amazing lifestyle for yourself. You've already gotten, you know, you've got a foundation of mindset that, that seems like on point, like where, where's, where do you go? Like what's, there are, there are no limits. So what do you do next? Yeah, I'm super into right now trying to get equity in the businesses that I've been marketing for. Like, that's like my real, like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get into that. And I've been lucky enough to get one business on board and like just sign the paperwork. Like, I think it was like a month ago or two months ago um, to be actually a partner in a business. Um, and so I just, I love that, you know, like, because I feel like, man, I'm providing you 70%, 60% of your leads that are coming in, like are coming from me. And so your business is going up because of me. So why can't we become partners in this? Um, and that's, that's just been huge. Like, I love that. And again, I think that comes from a lot of confidence of like, I know my worth in this, obviously month one, I would never be able to talk to someone like that. But once you kind of get that confidence and you're like, I, I, I am the prize. I know what I'm worth here. Then you can kind of start having those conversations with your business owners that you have a good relationship with, that you have a good track record with. Um, and then you can actually become, you know, partners in it. So the entrepreneurship just keeps going because now, you know, you own this business or now you own that business. So that's, that's been pretty cool. And I want to keep diving into that. Yeah, we're definitely headed in that direction too. And I've always had my mind, in, you know, on that kind of a, a proposition and we've had a few sort of near misses where, we had, you know, that the deals were teeing up and they just didn't go through for whatever reason. And we have, you know, so many other things going on. It's not, our, it hasn't been our primary focus, but I think that is the evolution of, you know, lead generators like, like Johnny and like, like us is that we have the opportunities to do these things as we learn more about our business, as we learn more about contractors, how they roll their challenges and all these different things, we can speak this, we can speak the language and, and talk to talk and walk the walk. And then our value just goes through the roof and we can come in with that, that level of confidence and, uh, you know, present that to somebody in a way that's going to uh, create an equity state for us for like uh, impact and legacy. Final question. What do you want to leave in the digital marketing space or for your family or whatever? We talked a little bit about your son, you know um, he's, he's young so you got some time here, but where do you, where do you see that going? Like we were always about impact, like what's your impact? Yeah. I mean, I would actually like to, um, I, I would love to, um, talk to more people about the lead gen, um, digital marketing space. Like I think that there's a lot of people that are just starting out that just need that extra, like, Hey, like, let's get this going. Um, and, because yes, they are an entrepreneur, but they just haven't tapped in fully to, um, you know, a hundred percent entrepreneur. Like they still need that little tiny push or something like that. And I love, uh, creating those experiences for people. Like I said, back in my, you know, nightclub days. Um, and so I want to bring that to, um, to, you know, to lead gen, to lead snap as well. Like I'm a big, I use lead snap for everything, just like a quick plug. I like, I, everything is through lead snap because it just makes my life easier. It makes my VA's life easier. Um, and so I just want to be able to like get the word out that like, Hey, like right now, I think in our group in lead snap, we have 2000 people. And I know that there's another 20,000 that could really benefit from, um, you know, the people in this group, the tools in this group. So 
Um, I, I short term, long term, like I just want to keep pushing um, and keep bringing people in because there's plenty of niches everywhere. There's plenty of cities everywhere. Like I just I don't feel like it's ever going to get too saturated with, uh, you know, marketers that are coming in. Uh, there's plenty of space for everyone. And so I just want to make sure that people have those tools um, and that they can get to a place where I'm at, because I love my life. I love what I do. And I want other people to, you know, enjoy that as well. And it's, it's super possible, like getting to that 10 K mark. Like I know, I know when I started to, it like seemed like a, a hill to climb, but like, once you get to it, you're like, Oh shit, this is possible. Like if I add another, you know, five clients, I'm at 15 K, you know, and then you're like really starting to party. Cause at that point I, that was like most money I've ever made in my life, you know? So it was, it's just, it's so doable and it's so obtainable. And it's like, it's like right there for so many people. And I just want to like help in any way I can um, get yeah. there. Because again, I, I love what I do. I love this lifestyle and I just want more people to enjoy it as well. Yeah, man. Yeah. And we, we keep pretty tight reins on the group, honestly, like a lot of people, a lot more people uh, attempt to join the group than we let in. We probably only let in like 20% these days just because they either don't answer the questions or they look like they're going to be they're like if their their job is freelancer at Fiverr, like they're probably not getting in. You know? <laughs> so we keep a yeah. ring on that. Like we only want, you know, more legitimate people. I know a lot of other groups are are a lot bigger, but we don't want our group to get spammed out or anything like that. So we hold that um, kind of um, discretion for the integrity of the group. But um, we definitely want to share it with as many people as possible, because as, as you said, Johnny, like, I don't feel like there's any threat of saturation or anything like that, because there's a ton of marketers out there, but there's not a ton of marketers like Johnny or like some of the, the other people on this call that are actually, that actually care, that are actually, you know, pushing the, the boundaries of, uh, and innovating in the model and, you know, doing new things and delivering value in the way that we are. If you're doing those things, there's always going to be a place for you. And we want more of those people around us, you know, because those are the people that are that are really figuring out things in real time and overcoming the challenges that are inevitable in any entrepreneurial path, any business model along the way. It's like if you're going to stay at a, at a solid level, then you're going to have to overcome. There's always going to be new challenges that you're going to have to overcome is the bottom line. So that's that's cool, man. I, I love to hear that. In the chat, we've got some very more specific questions. So if you're open to it, um, I, there's not, they're kind of out of context, but do you use Loom videos for prospecting, Loom or any kind of screencasting? I guess it would be the, the better question. I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I think people talk about it all the time and I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse, but man, those uh, heat maps are are huge because a lot of people like a business owner, they've never seen this before. They don't know how Google works. They don't know how their Google map works. So you make a five minute video that's tailored to that specific person and show them where they rank and show them where their, you know, top competitor ranks. It's sometimes it's kind of like a light bulb that clicks. They're like, Oh wait, like I didn't know about this. Cause a lot of the times they're at their house when they're searching for their business. And when they're at their house, that's where they got their postcard at, right? Or their video verification. So they're number one at their house. So they're like, what? I'm number one. They don't understand that, you know, the farther you go out from it, the, you know, he's number 10 now, you know, a half a mile away. So heat Man. maps are huge using the Loom videos for sure. Yeah, right on. And you kind of went over. And another thing on that, on that Loom video, a new feature that I've, I've never done it, but I put my face on there. Like I want them, you know, at the yeah. very bottom, you can have your face. I, before I did not do that. It wasn't my thing. But the moment I put a face on there and they saw that I'm like a real person and it, it just I felt like I got more traction with them or they were at least open for a call after that. So uh, I would definitely suggest putting your face on there. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah. huge. I mean, I think we have to go, you know, uh, above and beyond the call of duty here to you know create the level of trust with any kind of prospect these days because people are bombarded with information for sure. So the more that you can show that you're a real person, the better off you're gonna be, the more success you're gonna have. Um, Paul, Paul is asking, and you kind of went into this a little bit with like, you're getting referrals, like you're talking to the cousin of a current client or something like that. But if you have inbound leads, you just do they call you off of a tracking number on your GMB or your website or 
do you push them into a booked call or do you just call them up right away? Hey, mom, this is Johnny O'Leeds. Like, how, how do you do that? Uh, yeah. So for the most part, if someone like fills out a form, like, again, I, I'm just not in the right mind space for majority of the time to give a call. So I'll just kind of wait and uh, I'll, I'll try to give them a call maybe the next day. And if they don't answer, then I'll, I mean, for the most part, they're going to tell me their business. So I will uh, be the one that kind of proactively goes out, searches their business, does a loom video for them. Um, and then if I can find their, their email, I'll just kind of send it to them. Um, just kind of doing that extra step. I, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Again, it's a numbers game, but um, I don't like, I don't, when a lead comes in, I guess maybe this is because of where I'm at now, but it's not like, ah, I, I got to drop everything for it. You know, um, you still have to create your boundaries and you know, when you want to get to them, um, is when you're in the right mindset. And that's, that, that's for me. Do, do you do any kind of like follow-up, not even a follow-up sequence, but do you just like keep them in mind? Like if they, if you didn't get in touch with them or maybe they said it wasn't the right time, do you go back three weeks later and hit them up again or, or on any kind of cadence? Like they say, you know, 80% of sales happen after the fifth or seventh touch or whatever the numbers are. Do you do any of that? Or are you just like, you're ready today or you're not? See you. Like, how does that go? Uh, I'll, I'll probably give it a week, maybe two at the very most. Uh, but at that time, I feel like I'm just, I'm wasting my time and I can find another business owner that's again, in that same mindset as me. So, uh, I, I don't, I don't pay too much attention to, um, you know, if I get a lead in, like this is the end all be all, because I feel like there are like in, in a relationship, right. There's plenty of fish in the sea. You just got to find the right one that's for you. Um, and just have that mindset and don't, you know, deviate for anyone. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that. <laughs> um, yeah. How are we, how are you getting GBPs verified these days? What are you doing? What's your strategy? Yeah, that's a, I, you tell me, you know, I, it's, it has been so tough uh, these past, I would say like last December, man, I could put a, a, a GBP up in no time. And I was like open for business and everything. And then since January, man, it has just been, it has been a struggle. And I, I, I couldn't tell you because what works one week doesn't work the next week. So, you know, I, I try to do video verifications. I try to get my business owners on board. Um, I try to create uh, DBAs for them. Um, and I try to do the video verifications. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, sometimes we get lucky with a, with a, a text verify or sometimes, you know, I'll even find a guy that's charging me 200 bucks for it. And sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. Like, I, I don't know. That's a, that's an answer that I, I have, I don't know. And I don't think anyone does right now. It's like, that's probably like the, like the golden kind of ticket right now. It's like, how do you create a Google, my business like consistently, you know, and I just haven't been able to find it. It's, it's just a numbers game at this point, doing the video verification. So I, I do the video verifications, but I don't hold my breath for it. Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of like a numbers game. And, it, and it's also like knowing all the different strategies, understanding them, you know, being in a community where you can talk to other people, you can put a post in the group and things like that and, and kind of play off of each other. What, what's working? And just, just play the numbers game. And if you put out, you know, 58, 50 attempts and you get five, still worth it right so you, you just kind of have to play that game if you try one and it doesn't go through and you're like well this doesn't work well then you're probably not going to end up you know being johnny o or something like that um geo is asking some very detailed stuff about um sites and things like that geo i'm going to post in the chat a couple of videos that might be beneficial for other people on the call as well. The first one is called the first 30 days in lead gen. And the second one is called how to get to 10 K. And so if you have some of those uh, kinds of questions, I would highly recommend that you watch these two videos and you will get a lot of your questions answered. And then we'll get to one more thing here. There we go. And then do you offer a free trial? How long do you offer that for? And how does how does that work? 
Yeah, so I still do the old method. I'm trying to move into the more hybrid uh, method that I think Ben was talking about, where you do, you know, you do the lead gen, you do a little bit of branding, you take over their Google My Business and rank it, and you do SEO for them. Uh, I just at this point, I've, I'm like I said, I'm trying to transition to that, but I'm like a 98% lead gen guy. Um, I like owning the properties, and I like them not telling me what to do. Um, so I'm, what was the question again, Jeff? I'm sorry. It's kind you of got leads lost in advance, basically. Yes. So I'm a leads in advance kind of guy. I feel like yeah. that is like the biggest advantage that we have when doing lead gen, because, you know, I can send them leads and I'm like, man, this is completely free. I got, I, you, you don't have to pay me for anything, man. Here's two weeks. I do a two week trial. Sometimes, sometimes I, you know, not forget, but I may let it go for three weeks. And then I call back. I'm like, oh man, you got three weeks free, man. I see you closed a few deals and just keep it lighthearted. And sometimes they close. And sometimes again, the business owner doesn't find value in it. And right. I don't not take it personal. Right. Yeah. He's not the right guy. And I don't look at it as like, oh, I just wasted three weeks of my life. I'm like, well, all right, this guy didn't find the value. Let me find someone else. Um, and again, it's a numbers game. You just got to keep going. There's going to be eventually in a city. Like I've never, I've never come across a city where I'm like, I've just, talk to every single business owner that does this and no one wants it. Like that's just never happened. I don't know. Maybe I'm not in like this piano moving niche that maybe someone does, but um, it's just, it's never happened. It's a numbers game. And like at the beginning, I, I would just call anybody. Now, obviously I like write them down. So I'm not calling the same guy five times, but that, that was even a big thing for me. Um, like, Hey, when did I talk to him? What did I talk about? Is he interested? And um, you know, if I can't find someone, maybe I, you know, go back three months later and, you know, hit up the same guys like, Hey, are you ready for that? And mine's, you know, mindsets change, uh, with the business owner. So, but lead in advance is definitely my, my go-to for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to add something to that, but then I had a little brain. That's <laughs> my train of thought. Yeah. Um, God, what was I going to say? It was something important, I'm sure. What uh, what platforms do you use or what, what web hosting do you use? Basically, is another question. Yeah, so I use Namecheap. I have like everything in Namecheap. Uh, and is then again, I use Namecheap. Again? Namecheap hosting also? Uh, Namecheap. No, no, no. I use web host Python for hosting. Okay. So Namecheap for my URLs, uh, web host Python for my... And I'll tell you right now, like I, when I started lead gen, like I, I, I can't remember if it was Wix or what the other one was where it was like the drag mm -hmm. and drop websites, Weebly. I was like, all right, let me figure out how to use Weebly. <laughs> and now like I moved to WordPress and I can tell you right now, and I, it's maybe terrible to say, but I know absolutely nothing about WordPress. I couldn't even change an H1 tag. I couldn't even move anything on WordPress. I know nothing about it. And I'm okay with it because I have someone on my team who's an expert in that and that's fine. He can be the expert and I don't have to waste any of my brain power trying to figure it out. I wish uh, I, I think that's one thing. Saying. I wish I could say <laughs> I don't know anything about WordPress. Yeah, I just, I didn't want to get into it. You know, I was like, man, this is way harder and maybe from, maybe I'm not, you know, smartest guy, but I was like, well, this is way harder than Weebly and I don't want to put any time to it. So let me find a guy that, and my first guy was not very good. My second person was not very good. My third person wasn't very good. But my fourth person, you know, stuck. And now she's been with me for like two years now. So, you know, I, for me, I'm like a big believer. And I know like the Dan Martell thing is I buy back my time and I'm not going to, uh, you know, waste five days creating a website when this girl can create it in, you know, five hours for, you know, a cheap amount of, you know, 30, but 50, but whatever it is. Um, so I, I, I just do that. I stick to what I know. I love, I don't love, but I, my role is talking to the business owners and that's what I do best. And I stay there. Um, and I let my team kind of handle the rest. And I would, the moment you have, I would say like when you're in the lead gen and you like have some, you know, extra money, like, man, put it to those tasks that are just meticulous, unless you like it, unless you like creating websites. I just, I personally don't. And I just don't think there's value in it for me as, you know, the owner. Um, my time can be, you know, spent somewhere else. So, you know, find someone that can do it for you, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's also another sort of insight is that it took you four at bats to get the right person, right? So it's like, again, back to numbers game, right? 
try all the shit that doesn't work, throw stuff at the wall. Eventually something pans out and you can make it work, but you have to stick with it. And that goes back to sort of mindset, motivation, you know, the, the impact that you want to make for yourself and others around you is like, are you going to get up off the floor and take another shot? You know, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. I think. Um, what do you, yeah. Don't be discouraged by it. Yeah. I mean, you can, you, you know, we all can get discouraged. It's, it's, a, it's okay. It's, you know, we're human. Right. But have some kind of process where you can get out of that discouragement and get back into taking action. Right. It's like, what is it for you? Do you go take a walk? Do you, you know, I don't know, hit a pillow. Like everybody's got their thing. Right. So, so do whatever it is, figure it out, figure out what it is for you and, and move through those times because they will happen. You know, those, those, they will happen, but understand that it's hundred percent will happen. Take yeah. another shot and find the solution. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. It's not about giving up and packing your bags and going home. It's about figuring it out. Right. Uh, question. What do you prefer rank and rent paper lead or percentage of job, or we can add to the, the list equity. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've always done uh, just flat fee. I, I just feel like, and I always, when I talk to a business owner, I'm like, Hey man, I'm probably going to make more money if we do pay per lead or if we do, you know, percentage deals. But honestly, I don't want to take the time to do that. Like I, I run my business very lean. Like I don't want to waste your time. You know, I hope you don't want to waste my time. And if I'm having to listen to these calls all the time, for me, it's just not, it doesn't make sense for me. So let's just do a flat fee and you know, it's going to be a sweetheart deal. It's going to be a win-win. Um, and again, knock on wood, I, I, you know, I haven't had a guy that's like, well, no. Um, but again, I'm not charging the, the, the highest of the high, you know, I'm probably middle to low and that flat fee kind of sticks around. I really haven't raised my prices that much. Um, cause again, I just, I like to provide value and I, I want to make it so ridiculous that this guy's like, if I go to Google, I'm going to spend that in three days, what I'm spending with this guy in a month, you know? Yeah, make it make sense for them so then you have them yeah. for the long term. Yeah, because going reprospecting or in a paper lead situation, and I've gotten myself into those deals just because of, it was it's situational. But once I find myself in them, I am very, uh, uh, you know, I'm not not happy with, with where I'm at. Yeah. There's a lot of admin involved that you have to take into consideration where I could have just said, hey, give me you know, X dollars a month, um, that would be a ridiculous deal for them. And then I wouldn't have to think about it. And we have to think about it costs me a lot, you know? Yeah. And for me, for me, I've actually done one, one deal where it was a, a pay per lead. And I just, I, I just felt like, and I've heard from other people too. I just feel like, like you might come to a deal like, Hey, after every minute 30, like this is considered a deal. And then all of a sudden, if you start providing a hundred calls a month that are a minute 30, then they're like, whoa, this call was, it was a minute 30, but they weren't really looking. And then you're like, half an hour. it's like, it's yeah. always changing. You know, like the, I yeah. feel like the goalposts are kind of always moving. Like once you're doing really well, it's like, well, like at, at the beginning, he's paying you a hundred bucks a month. Like, okay, cool. But then you're, you know, you're getting in there and he's paying you 5,000 a month. And he's like, Whoa, holy, holy cat. It's just, I just feel like it's, it's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of micromanaging that business owner. And I don't like to micromanage my business owners. You know, that's not my thing. Uh, I know what I do. I send them, you know, prospects. He knows what he does. He's the one that closes the deals. Like we're really like, that's our jobs. And like, like, let's stick to it and let's put our energy to those two things. And that's what, that's what I try to keep in mind with my guys. Yeah. Keep, and girls. Yeah. Don't, don't complicate things for yourself for sure. And the more that you are out there kind of like testing things, the more you, you start to learn what not to do right? Because you make mistakes. Well, at least for me, I make, make the mistakes and get in deals that I wish I wasn't in and, or have to have to revise deals or go back and renegotiate and restructure and all that. It takes so much time and, and energy. It's, it's frankly not worth it. But with that, Johnny, I want to be respectful of your time. You had a lot of questions peppered at you. Thank you so much for your energy and coming on and sharing uh, your story and just some of the things that have worked for you. I think that everybody has uh, could take away a few things from this call, me included. Uh, thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you continue to succeed. And I hope to see you in person again real soon. Keep jamming, keep enjoying the lifestyle and spending time with your family and making a difference in contractors' lives. 
And we'll see you guys on the next call. Thanks so much for, for everybody joining. Take care. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.